Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to create hair that grows over time in Houdini, so let's dive in. So I've created a new blank scene in Houdini and the first step is to add a new geometry node. So you can dive inside and the first step is to create some lines. So basically you can use any type of line. You can use basic curve or you can use your own lines. But in my case, I will create some lines and add a bit of noise to them. So to do that, let's add a box. Let's press P to open the parameter for the node. And here we change the size of the box to three. Now let's add an ISO offset node to create a volume based on this box. So here for the ISO offset, I will increase the value here to 50. Now let's add a scatter node to create some points points on this volume. So here for the scatter node, in my case, I want to create three lines. So I will create three points. Of course, you can change this value at any time. Now let's create an attribute randomize. In that case, we can randomize our orient attribute to get some different orientation for each individual lines. So you can replace the attribute name from CD to orient. And here you can put the dimension value to four. Now let's add a copy to points. So now we can copy some lines on those points. So let's plug the points on the second input of the copy to points. And now we can create a line. Here for the line, I will change the length value. So instead of one, I will put the value at 10 and I will change the direction. Instead of Y axis, I will put the uh, direction on the Z axis. So you can put zero on the Y axis and one on the Z axis. So now you can put that to the center of the scene. So to do that, you can copy the length parameter, right click, copy parameter, and you can go to the origin Z axis. So you can remove that, paste relative reference, and you can put that to negative and you can divide that by two. In that case, you have the line on the center of the scene, even if you change the length here. So in my case, I will put the value back at 10. So now you can plug the line on the first input of the copy two points and let's see the result. So now you can see that we have those lines created. So for now, we have only two points for each line. So you can visualize the point by clicking on this and you can see that we have a point at the beginning and the point at the end of each line. So to create a bit more points, we can add a resample node. And here with the resample node, I will change the length to 0.02. In that case, you can see that we have a bit more point for each line. So now we can add a noise to those lines. So to do that, let's add an attribute VOP. Here you can dive inside and you can add a noise called AA noise, anti-aliasing noise. So you can add an add node to add some noise to the position of the line. So you can plug the position to the first input of the add. You can plug the position to the position of the noise and you can plug that to the second input of the add. So now you can put that to the position output. And here you can right click and you can go to Vex Vops options and you can click on create input parameter. In that case, we can change the setting of the noise on the sub level. So here don't forget to change 3D input and 3D noise. And now you can go back to the sub by clicking on this. And here you can just uh, change some settings for the noise. Of course, it's up to you. But in my case, I will change the frequency. Instead of one, I will put the value at 0.3. I will change the offset to 20.2. Here I will put the amplitude to 10 and I will decrease the roughness to zero. And I will also change the noise type and I will put that to simplex. I will also change the value on the attribute randomized node. So you can select this node. You can go to the option tabs. And here I will change the global seed and I will put the value at 1888. Also, I will change uh, the seed on the scatter node. So here you can select the scatter node and you can play with the seed. So in my case, I will put the value at 53. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials. And that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So here you can play with different settings for the noise. It's up to you, but in my case, I will use those settings. So now let's add a loop. Let's add a loop called for each uh, primitive. And here for each primitive, let's add a match size node to put each primitive at the center of the scenes. So now we can align the line on the Z axis. So because for now you can see that the line is not aligned with the Z axis. So you can do that with a transform node. And here you can add a bit of rotate on the Y axis. So you can put the value at something like minus 38 and you can see the result of the line. So now it's close to uh, align on the Z axis. So now you can see that the line are very close together. So you can add a bit of space between each individual line. So to do that, you can add an exploded view. And here on the exploded view, you can change the settings on the Y axis. You can put the value at 0.2. 
and you can put the value at zero on the z-axis. And here you can change the uniform scale to something like 2.175. So now let's add another match size node to put the line on the center of the scenes. And here with a match size node, you can click on scale to fit and you can increase the target size to something like four. So now let's add a smooth node. And here with a smooth node, we can increase the strength value to something like 50 and we can decrease the filter quality to one. So now let's add a resample node. And now we can add a curve view attribute on every curve. So here for the resample node, I will put the value like before at 0.02. And here I will click on a uh, curve view attribute. In that case, we have a curve view attribute for each individual line. And you can visualize this attribute by clicking on this and enable the curve view attribute. In that case, you can see that we have an attribute going from zero to one for each individual line. So now let's create two groups, one group for the first point of each primitive and one group for the last point of each primitive. So to do that, let's add a group expressions. So we can create a first group for the start group. So you can rename it something like start. And here you can change the group type from primitive to points and you can type F at curve view which is equal to zero now you can see that we have our first points uh, in the group right here now you can duplicate this one you can plug that here and you can rename the name of the group to end and you can put the value of at f at curve view is equal to one and now you can see that we have the end point uh, into this group so now we can combine these two groups together to have one single group with the start point and the end point so to do that let's add a group combine not and here for the group combine we can change uh, the group type to points you can uh, set a group name so in my case i will call it something like start points and this start point group is equal to our start group with our end group so you can choose union and here you can select your end group so now you can see that we have a group called start points with the end point and the last point of each curve so now let's add the mops spread fall off node to create a fall off for each curve so here for the mob spread fall off, you can visualize the attribute by clicking on preview fall off. Now you can select a start point group. So in our case, we have created this uh, point group into this group combined. And in my case, I've called it start points. So you can select the group by clicking on this. And now you can go to animate and you can animate the spread value. So you can see you can animate the spread like this. So I will start the animations at the spread value at something like 0.15. I can add a keyframe by clicking on Alt and left click. And now I can go to the frame 144 and I can increase the spread value to something like 1.1, something like this. And Alt and left click to add another keyframe. So here you can select this node, you can go to animation editor, press H, and here you can play with the curve if you want. So in my case, I will put something like this. So now let's remap this mops fall off attribute. So to do that, you can use the mops remap fall off and here you can select your mops fall off attributes and you can visualize the attribute with the remap ramp and here you can put the new dot here to something like 0.75 you can put the value at one and here you can select the last dot and you can put the value at something like 0.70 so now you can select everything and here on the interpolation you can select monotone cubic so now let's add an orient along curve. And now let's add a sweep node to create a little geometry on this line. So here for the sweep node, I can select the shape here. And in my case, I will select round tubes. So here I will decrease the radius to 0.01 and I will increase the column number to 24. So now let's add a normal node. So now let's create some colors for the air. So to do that, let's add an attribute noise. And here we can keep the attributes on CD for the color attributes. So here you can change the range value and you can put that to zero center red and you can put the amplitude to something like 3.5. So now you can play with different noise setting if you want. But in my case, I will put the element size to 1.42 and here I will put the offset to 6.9. You can also play with the roughness if you want. So you can go here and you can decrease the roughness to something like 0.4. So now let's create some hair for the simulation. So let's add the hair generate node. Here on the hair generate node, you can change the density to something like uh, 20,000. So we are using quite low resolution for the simulation and in post simulation we can increase the hair number. So here we can keep mostly everything by default except for the length. So you can increase it to 0.5. Ready to level up your Houdini pipeline? Get the Houdini script pack. Complete toolkit, seven powerful tools today, plus every future release with free updates. Save time on composition, geometry splitting, material creation, and more. YouTube subscribers get 50% off with code toolkit. Click the link in the description and transform your workflow today. And here you can go to attribute tab and you can copy the uh, mobs fall off attributes in case we need to use that. And you can also use the color attributes. So now let's add another group expression, this time to create a pink group for the hair. So with a group expression here, you can go to group type points and you can set the group name to pinpoints. And here you can select the preset called first point of primitive. You can see that we have 
the first point of each primitive in this group. So now let's promote our color and CD attribute back to points. So let's add an attribute promote. So we can promote from primitive to points and you can select the mobs fall off and the color attribute. So now you can add a null and let's specify this is the output for the different attributes. So we can rename it something like out attributes. So now let's create the hair simulations. So let's add the vellum configure hair. So here one more time you can play with different settings for the hair if you want but in my case I will keep everything by default. The only thing that I need to do here on the vellum hair constraints is to select the pin uh, point group. So we have created this one on the group expression 3. So let's select the pin point group here, pin points, and you can keep everything else by default. So now let's add the vellum solver. Here on the vellum solver, I will go to the force tab and I will remove the gravity. And here I will increase the cache memories under the simulation tab and I will add a zero here. So here's the last thing I need to do on the vellum hair constraint is to put a name for the group here. So by default, the group name is stretch, but let's re rename it to something like hairs. So now you can copy this null to get access to the different attributes and we can use the mops fall off attribute to create the growth over time. So let's copy this one, control C. Now we can dive in the vellum solver and now we can access to the attribute to create the growth. So to do that, let's add the vellum constraint properties. You can plug that to the source. So now you can select a, a group for this uh, node. So here you can select the hair group that we have created just before. And now you can go to the input tab and you can select the input three and you can put that to SOP. And here you can paste the nulls that we have copied just before. So in that case, we can get access to the different attributes here in the DOP. So now you can go back to the properties tab and you can enable the rest length scale and you can manipulate this rest length scale value based on the mops fall off. So to do that, you can use VEX by enable these options. So let's create a little variable called float growth, which is equal to points. Now let's get access to the mops fall off attributes. So we can put two for the input number three. Now let's type mops fall off because this is the attribute we want to use to create the growth. And let's type at pitinum. So now let's type rest scale is equal to smooth. And now you can smooth between zero and one based on our growth variables. So now let's add a sub solver to copy the color on the DOP geometry. So let's add sub solver. You can plug that here and now you can dive in the sub solver. Let's add an object merge. So here you can paste the nulls that we have copied before for the different attributes. And now let's add an attribute transfer. So you can plug this one to the first input and you can plug this one to the second input of the attribute transfer. And here you can select the attribute you want to transfer. So in my case, I will select mops fall off and color attributes. So now let's add a bit of wind to our hair. So let's add a pop wind node. You can plug that to the forces output. And here for the settings of the wind, you can play with different value if you want. But in my case, I will put the amplitude at two. I will put the pulse length to 2 and the roughness to 0.3. So now you can go back to the sub level and we can put that in cache. So let's use the vellum IO. Let's rename it something like hair tutorials. So here you can put that to explicit. You can put that in a cache folder and dollar OS folder and you can put that in cache for 144 frame. So you can right click delete channel and put 144. So now you can click on save to disk. So the cache is done for about two minutes and now you can see that we have the hair growing over time. So now we can blast some hair based on the mops fall off. So to do that, let's add a blast node. And here with a blast node, you can type at mops fall off, which is below something like 0.05. And here you can put that to points and you can see the result that we have the hair growing over time. So now let's add a clean node. So now we need to increase the hair number because for now it's quite low. So let's add a guide uh, skin attribute lookup. So in the first input, we need to add the guide. So the guide is the output of the clean, which is the simulated hair. And on the second input, we need the skin. So the skin is just the geometry that we use to create the hair. So you can select the normal node and you can put that to the second input of the guide skin attribute lookup. So here you can transfer your color attribute. So here on the point attribute, you can select the colors. Now let's add a rest node. And now let's add another hair gen node. So you can plug the guide to the second input. And here you can put the skin on the first input. So you can select the output of the normals and you can plug that to the first input of the hair gen. So here you can just change the density value. So instead of 1000, you can put the value at something like 3 millions. So now you can go to the attribute tab one more time. And here for the source attribute, we can transfer the mops fall off. And here for the guide attribute, we can transfer the color attributes. So now let's add a null to the output of the hair. So now let's promote the mops fall off attribute from primitive to points. So let's add an attribute promote. 
And here we can promote the mobs fall off from primitive to point. So you can select primitive on the original class and you can select the mobs fall off attribute. And you can promote that to points. So now one more time we can blast some hair based on the mobs fall off. So let's add a blast node. And here we can type at mobs fall off which is below 0.05. And here we can put that to points. So now we can add a guide process node and we can select the preset set length. So in that case, we can create a random length for each hair. So here you can change the mode. Instead of set, you can put that to multiply. And here you can click on randomize. And you can put the minimum scale factor to something like 0.7. And the maximum to 1. So now you have a random length for each hair. And now let's add another one. So guide process node. And now you can select the preset called freeze. So here for the freeze, let's put the frequency at 1. And here let's put the amplitude value at 0.15. And now you can use the mobs fall off attribute to control the freeze. So basically we want to remove the freeze here on the beginning of the growth. So to do that, you can go to the amplitude and you can multiply that with the mobs fall off. So you can go to guide attributes. And here you can select your mobs fall off attribute. Now you can see that we can remove the freeze from the uh, beginning of the growth. So now you can add a new file cache. And you can rename this one something like hand hairs. And now you can put that to explicit and you can put that to cache folder and dollar wise folder and here you can put that in cache for 144 frames so you can delete channel and put that to 144 so now you can click on save to disk and it will save the simulation to cache so when it's done you can just add an attribute wrangle if you want and here you can control the thickness of your hair if you are using redshift so you can type at width which is equal to maybe you can type times equal and here you can create a channel so you can rename it something like thickness and here you can create this channel and you can multiply that by 0.2 for example if the width is too big with a default value so now you can add an attribute promote and you can promote the color attribute from point to primitive to use with redshift so here you can select points and you can put the, the new class to primitive and you can select your color attributes so now you can add the null to specify this is the output of the sim so you can rename it something like render so now to use this hair with redshift, you can go here on the object level, you can select your geometry um, container and here you can go to the redshift object and you can click on render polygon as here. So that's pretty much it. And you can assign your material basically here on the render or you, or you can add a material sub node here directly on your sub levels. So you can use the material sub node. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Don't forget you can download this project file in the description. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye.